Hi, I'm Kate Bonner for the Valentine's Day edition of the Watercolor Diaries on KBTV Online. Thanks for joining. A few weeks ago, I came across an article in Time Magazine that was right up my alley titled, Why We Love. Well, the author, Jeffrey Kluger, put forth a very bold statement that romance, not just the urge to procreate, but romance and all the feelings that go along with it, the excitement, the illicit anticipation, it is romance, we need that for survival as well. That idea really hit me because science over the past decade has told us exactly the opposite about relationships with the opposite sex. So I decided to investigate, it being the month of Valentine's Valentine's Day and all, and what I found was so compelling that I chose to do a two-part series, and it's titled The Biology of Love, basically looking at the biological cues about why we fall in love and how we stay in love. The premise of romantic relationships, at least where our genes are concerned, has been that a couple's strong feelings for each other and our frequent urges to have sex are driven by biological programming that screams, procreate. As Kluger himself put it, and I quote here, your principal job while you're alive is to conceive offspring, bring them to adulthood, and then obligingly die so you don't consume resources, better to spend them on the young. This urge is definitely imprinted on our genetic code, but scientists backed by several new studies are discovering that there is more to it, that there are actually biological cues that trigger the quote, transcendent sense of tenderness you feel toward a person who sparks your interest. It is this biological urge that moves people to compose poetry, write novels, show up at 2 a.m. at a lover's window to serenade them, basically act completely nuts. As Helen Fisher, an anthropologist at Rutgers University and something of an expert on romance and research put it, people live for love, die for love, kill for love. It can be stronger than the drive to stay alive. But why? What's going on inside of our bodies and our brains? Well, as scientists begin to look, they're able to separate romance into individual strands. And the first is smell. We've all heard about pheromones or scent signaling chemicals. Scientists are still much in the dark about how they work in people, but they have isolated a few compounds. There are driver pheromones. These control women's menstrual cycles, which men seem to unconsciously respond to. One study conducted by a psychology professor at UCLA revealed that women report that their partners are more loving and attentive and more jealous of other men when they're ovulating. In other words, their most fertile period of the month. Another study found that strippers get their biggest tips during their most fertile time of the month when they're on their period. Another interesting study looked at how smell and taste affects both sexes and helps them narrow down potential partners. This study looked at part of the genes that control one's immune system. They're called the, quote, major histocompatibility complex, or MHC, basically the part that influences tissue rejection. Conceive a child with someone whose MHC is too similar to your own and risk increases that your womb will expel the fetus. But find a partner with a sufficiently different MHC and you're more likely to carry a baby to term. In the study at University of Bern, Switzerland, women were asked to smell t-shirts worn by anonymous males and then pick which ones appealed to them. Over and over, these women chose the ones worn by men with a safely different MHC. Basically, through smell, these women could discern, subconsciously, the partners they were most compatible to have children with. This same discernment can also be gauged through a person's saliva, which some scientists believe may partly explain the custom of kissing. As one researcher said, and I quote here, kissing might just be a taste test. Incidentally, kissing also magnifies the other attraction signals, like smell and touch. And women can also pick up on a man's testosterone level through lip lock says psychologist Gordon Gallup, who authored a study on kissing, quote, at the moment of a kiss, there's a rich and complicated exchange of postural, physical, and chemical information. There are hardwired mechanisms that process all this. Perhaps the most obvious biological cue is sight. According to the author of the Time Magazine article, Jeffrey Kluger, men are attracted to women with supple breasts and curvy hips because what they see is a woman who will bear children and nurse them well. Women, on the other hand, are attracted to men with broad shoulders and strong chests because they see a man who will be able to protect them from harm. Tune in next time to see how these biological cues are processed in the brain. There are actually three areas of the brain that process biological cues of love. 
Thanks for joining today for our special Valentine's Day edition, part one, The Biology of Love. I'm Kate Bonner for the Water Cooler Diaries on KPTV Online. <laughs>